Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games and interviews and Darcy. And also Darcy. And also Darcy. <laughs> and Cats. He's off screen right now. Yeah. Oh boy, today we have a show. We do. We This piece are of paper going... will tell us. This piece of paper will reveal. <laughs> but don't look too close. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have an interview with Wolfgang Stubig and Marco Johannes all about the pending updates, upgrades to the plus cart, which extends its uh, usability, its playability, more games you'll be able to play on this cart very, very, very soon. And we're going to be talking all about that. And so it's more and plus. More and plus. Yes. It's right in the name. Plus cart keeps That's adding right. more and more. Yeah. Um, so they're <laughs> going to be talking all about the updates and how it happened and uh, which games you'll be able to play. And Darcy will be demonstrating these I'm amazing... so good at demonstrating how to play games. <laughs> you, should, you, should just, you should just go to the Darcy channel and be like, ah, I would like to learn how to play these games. I it's will watch very, Darcy. Very he will not fail us. <laughs> very instructional. <laughs> um, and we also have the uh, world premiere of Mattress Monkeys as well. So we're going to be monkeys later on, jumping on mattresses. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but first, I want to thank all the uh, Twitch subscribers who help support the show, help make this all happen. 8-Bit uh, uh, Poet, who, whose game we're going to be playing later. Al Defer, who we're going to be talking to very shortly. <laughs> and it, Both in a row, it's kind of funny. Andrea Atari, Armscore Coder, Atari 800 XL Rules, Atari 874, Atari HBR, Polka, Bruno Stice, Captain Class, Charles Donny Charles Mal, Charles Wynn, Chitla, Cubanismo, Sierra Reboot, Dianoid, Dan, if you see Dave M. Drexel, Dr. Mukazi, Anshuas, Gamma Dev, Glenn, Main, Great Defender, Ground Trooper, HOG, Ivor Towers, Johnny WC, Kabuto Coda, Carl G, Karakak, Croco 20, Scunner, Veltifer, Lambda Express, Mad Max, Maddie Sipiti, Mark Johannes, who we'll be talking to as well. Uh, Mark Spacing, Metal Atari, Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Mike the Town, Miss No More, Miss Command, MK Swift, Mr. Fix, Nathan Storm, Neo Mini, Nostalgic, Pseudographic, Squawk, Arantuitz, Rendered Ghost, Rent, Repentless VG, Revan Tool, Ricardo Pim, Six Sweet, Spinny B, Spiceware, Spinly 97, Eat Ramirez, Ramirez, Train, TK, Dan K, Trek, MD, Tweeny, Vexor, X, Vintage, Him, Memories, Vitoka, VG, Double Down, X, Kent, X, and Zombie Alice. Uh, if you want to support the show, just uh, click on uh, subscribe, or you can just follow us, and you'll know when we're on next, and you can uh, see our ugly mugs on the screen. Uh, just a quick piece of news. Tomorrow is the Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo, uh. and Tanya and, I, Tanya and I will be down there, walking around, looking at things. Not doing anything specific. We'll just be an attendee. So if you uh, if you see us, just come by and say hi. We might have a sticker or something for you, or or whatever you want, just say hi from across the room or wave. You don't have to come up to us if you don't want to either. <laughs> it, it's not required. Um, so if you're in the Vancouver area, um, um, Atari will not be there. He will Aww. be at home, unfortunately. I don't think uh, he wants to be there. He couldn't afford a ticket. That is a problem. He doesn't have a job. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't get allowance. He doesn't either. get any allowance. He, he gets it in treats, and That's those right. are not. He spends fiat every penny currency. of his allowance on, on <laughs> treats right. and pets. Oh, it goes yeah. all to the treats. Yeah. yeah, and pets. There, there's an exchange rate, but I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, he's terrible at paying his bills because I pet him all oh, the time. I never received a single oh, credit. I know. Yeah. Oh, he's terrible. He owes so much in pets. Um. So here's your uh, list of games you'll be playing. Um, do not reveal, but uh, do it in this order. Those are the directories. Those are the directories right there. Actually, let me reboot it just so it's not playing a game right now. Hello to everybody in the chat. So let's get to the interview. So uh, I would like to uh, welcome to ZPH. Oh, actually, let's uh, let's get our earpieces in so we can hear them. Oh, that would be good. That would be uh, super handy. Not... I'm a fan of hearing. Yes, hearing's good. Here you go. His job is ringing bells and emptying treat balls. He's very good at it. He's very good at that. Okay. Um, I would like to welcome... Hopefully this is working. To Mine Z... just binged. Oh, good. It's, okay. Uh, it's not because I touched it wrong? Uh, maybe. Actually, it could be. 
I would like to welcome to ZPH two developers that were instrumental in bringing a DPC Plus and soon CDFJ to the Plus cart. Marco Johannes, aka Marco J, developer of Atari 2600 games such as Kovi Kovi, Lord of Biscay, Modern Battle, and Pitcat, and Wolfgang Stubig, aka Aldefer, who is the developer of 1942 Cave Apocalypse for the 2600 and the maintainer of all things Plus cart and Plus Store. Woo! Welcome to the show, Marco and Wolfgang. Hello. Well, it's great to be on the hello, show, Jay. Hello. It, it is great to have you back on the show, uh, Marco, and welcome, Wolfgang. I believe this is your first time on the show. Yes, the first time. Hi, James. Excellent. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is this is big news. This is this is huge to have another cartridge that will be able to support DPC plus and more. Um, but before we get into that, can you just uh, give us a little bit of uh, information, some background on um, maybe your programming background and game development background and when your interest in the Atari 2600 started? Very brief though. Okay. Uh, Marco. Okay. Um, I guess I started with um, QBasic and DOS years ago, and then my friend had an Atari 2600 Junior back in 92, and he brought it around to my house, plugged in my TV, and it played a game on the TV. I've never seen something like that before, and I was just amazed. So we played River Raid. That's like my first experience for Atari. So um, That's a good one to start with. <laughs> yeah. Um, but later I got into C++ programming, and um, I, I learned some um, assembly programming at university. And I recently got back into doing um, assembly programming for Atari 2600 and trying to combine that with C++ that I learned as well. Um, yeah, and that's... I, I like video games and the, the challenge of being able to uh, get the games running and test them and um, just challenge yourself. And yeah, that's my background. Excellent. And, uh, and Wolfgang? What, uh, what's your background? I, I actually uh, never owned an Atari 2600 back in the days. I bought one about 10 years ago by, at a garage sale. That was the first. <laughs> and then I started thinking, what can you do with it? Yep. And that leads to many, many things, yes. <laughs> including, yeah. including the plus card. Um, so... Can you give us a little background for people? I'm, I'm sure most people that are in the <coughs> chat right now uh, know what the Plus Card is about, but maybe some people that are watching later on YouTube. Um, can you give us a little bit about what the Plus Card is all about and maybe how it differs from other uh, multi-carts? What kind of features that it uh, can offer over top of them? The plus card is basically uh, another multi card like uh, the Uno card, which it derived from, but it uses uh, um, a Wi Fi connection to download the games and to play the games. And it also uses the Wi Fi connection during the games to uh, add internet features to the game. Yeah, which is, which is something pretty, pretty unique for the 2600 that it can connect up to the internet um, and not just connect up to, it can download the games from the repository of the Plus Store. So maybe talk a little bit about, about the Plus Store. Well, the Plus Store is just a, a, a community maintained repository of, of games. It's mostly maintained by the ROM admin, uh, David Bone, Chris Rock at Atari Age. And uh, Everyone who has an account at the Plus Store can upload to his own MyRoms folder his own games. It's very handy for developers, so you can really fast get your game onto the Atari 2600. Right, and we'll be playing Mattress Monkeys later on through the Plus Cart, downloading it off the internet. So we'll have a um a, a demonstration of that of course all the games that we'll be playing to oh, playing today <laughs> uh demonstrating today uh the new uh new features will be also be downloaded from the plus store and uh there's also collaboration as well because you've shared these directories of games with me so somebody can set up a directory share it with another plus store 
a login person and they can collaborate on one game and see each other's uh, binaries that they've uploaded. Yeah, it's very handy for developers to share their ROMs with testers and other developers. Yeah. So before we get, uh, before we demo some of the games and show off what uh, the new updates that you've done for the Plus Cart, um, can you uh, explain for those who don't know what DPC Plus is and what the ARM chip in the Plus Cart is used for? Because that's really where a lot of the magic happens is uh, the ARM chip able to uh, do a lot of the background stuff. So. Um, Maybe explain a little bit about DPC Plus and ARM chip when programming for the uh, Atari 2600. Um, Marco, do you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so DPC Plus and then later CDFJ are um, innovations that allowed um, a processor that's on board the cart uh, to perform calculations much faster than the 2600 ever could and to also be able to modify some instructions so that it can pull data out of data streams and be able to show it on the screen. And uh, the name of the game in 2600 is the, the beams going across the screen is to be able to update the register as fast as possible. And the technology in there uh, changed it from a load, uh, something that used to take five units of time, only took two units of time. So you could pack more into the screen as it went across. And it also allowed a back end of uh, RAM to be able to build a, a screen with, with all like, uh, more detail than you possibly could with just the, the regular programming model for 2600. So, um, and CDFJ, again, is another innovation on that. And um, it also allows you to run code in the background that's running natively on the ARM chip, sometimes even while the 2600 is processing in other ways. So it allows, like, uh, more processing and more, more things on the screen. It just accelerates the process and you can make games that are more detailed and also music that's more detailed um yeah yeah it's like a an accelerator for the 2600 yeah and this 2600 still has to um carry the load of displaying everything on the screen it doesn't take over the 2600 it uh assists and does things in the background and gets things ready for yeah. the 2600 is that uh, an apt description the 2600 becomes a slave <laughs> <laughs> it's like yes yes sir i will display that yes right on it i don't and need it, to make allows to do it faster yeah don't need to make any decisions just draw i think you said this before draw 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 draw, draw. right yeah yeah um so um let uh, one more question before we start up can you tell us who was involved in uh bringing the dpc plus compatibility to the plus card and each uh, what role each person played? Because I know it's more than just the two of you. There's a, the, the community is a collaborative effort and there's lots of people involved. So I definitely think it would be great to give a shout out to everybody else that uh, contributed to this project. Um, should I take this one? Or? Uh, I, I first started in 2020, uh, in the beginning of 2020, with uh, porting the Stella driver for DPC Plus to the plus card, but uh, it was only uh, for the non-ARM enhanced games that worked at that time. And uh, I knew there was only a little bit missing for the ARM code, but uh, I, never, yeah. I had, didn't have the abilities to debug the stuff on the plus card. And then uh, at the beginning of this year, Stephen Illingworth Jet that Elite from the uh, from Atari age uh, um, started to look into it and uh, for his Gufa emulator, Gufa 2600, and then it it went ahead with him and uh, Marco J this time without without me in the beginning. <laughs> People are saying it's very staticky, so I'm just going to cut you out for a second and then bring you back uh, let's see if that fixes it uh, people are going static 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 let's see if I can maybe do that turn it up on the laptop 
Okay, try uh, and say something again. Test one, two Hello. for me. Okay, well, hopefully that's better. Um, uh, anybody else who helped contribute to the uh, development of the DPC Plus? Well, yeah, Stella. Stella is where a lot of the source code comes from and a lot of the mm -hmm. um, research that if we try to work out how, how they work, we look at the, the Stella source code. And, um, yeah, that pretty much. Excellent. Yep, that's great. So um, for many years, so it was so close. 2020, um, there was two demos that could run it. You could run Chaotic Grill on the Plus Start, Plus Card since 2020. It's been there. Also, there was a DPC yep. Plus demo. And the thing okay. about those two particular DPC Plus games is they don't use any ARM custom code. They just use um, the ARM okay. registers, and that, that has allowed them to work. Okay. So the, the missing tiny piece was the uh, ARM custom code. And, uh, yeah, yep. Steve Jetsadili was able to use, use his emula emulator that he writes to be able to kind of look at how all the gears are meshing and, and what's going wrong and look at it at a low level and, and try to get in there and pinpoint exactly what was wrong. And then, yeah, that was that was the spark that kind of created this. Um, yeah, one, if anybody hasn't seen the Gopher emulator, it is, it is unbelievable. The depth that you can analyze what's going on on the Atari 2600. It's got amazing visuals that you can see just about everything <laughs> that that's going on under the hood so i, I imagine it was a, a massive help in in getting this all going yeah, yeah. and uh, one day i downloaded the scramble demo by chap games off the internet and i thought oh let's see if i can get it running on the plus card and so i tried it out and wow the title screen came up and i was like wow that's awesome and then you start <laughs> the game and poof i'm like why did that happen so i went to jets Adili because he's an expert at the um, ARM instructions and ARM machine code, that he could actually, he actually got in there and started binary hacking the, the, the binary to change memory addresses. And he actually almost got it working completely just by doing binary hacking. And uh, he's wow. obviously an expert at when he, he's been designing the emulator to uh, work with this machine language for the ARM. And um, yeah. that, that's what really kicked it off. Yeah. I, so speaking of scramble, that's what we're going to boot up first. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I remember at one time, uh, uh, Michael J dumped the memory of the plus card and sent it to uh, Stephen Jetset Illy to uh, import it uh, to Goofer 2600 and run it there and see where where the bugs are. Yeah, with the uh, ST link. The a linkage that goes oh. inside of the uh, memory of the right um, the chip in the plus card. And the great thing is, is um, even if it crashes, you can still get in there and see why it crashed and dump all the memory. And you can actually see what its uh, vital signs were just before it died. So it's extremely handy. You can dump any amount of memory you want. Wow. That's, that's absolutely amazing that it can get to that granularity. Um... And, and uh, Steve was actually able to get some of the plus card memory and import in that into his emulator and then try recreate the bug like that, like take a snapshot of what happened on hardware <laughs> and then throw it into software. Wow. It, was, it was amazing. I don't know how he did it, but that, wow. that was part of it. That, uh, that, that's incredible that, that there's an interoperability between, between the software and the hardware. That's absolutely incredible. So we have Scramble running on the plus card now this uh was not able to be you can just start it start <laughs> this was not this was not able to be played before um on people's plus cards but and the only way you could play this game was on the harmony cart and um and emulation now the harmony cart also has an arm chip on it correct that's correct now yep. So, why would there be? Can you explain? Let let us not jump ahead. Actually, actually, maybe that's a good one. Why? Why? If there's an arm chip on the harmony cart and there's an arm chip on the plus cart, why would it not be able to be um, just loaded up on the plus cart? How do you bomb? They have. It's, um, they have to, it's automatic. Oh. They okay. have the same. They have the same instruction set, but not the same memory layout. That's the problem. 
Ah. Yes. And the Harmony also has what's called an MAM. Um, it's like a memory controller that the plus cut doesn't need or doesn't use. So those instructions are not needed for plus cut. They can be kind of ripped out or ignored. But yeah, all the memory and flash and it's all different. It's like a different layout. So potentially you just have to change memory addresses to get it working. Okay. And that's what Jeff uh, really did when he kind of bit binary hacked Scramble the first time. He changed it. Oh, okay. Right. And then it said, oh, that's where the information is. Um, so was it always known or that DPC Plus and CDFJ capabilities um, for the Plus cart was possible and it was just a matter of getting it done? Or was it like, I don't know if this is going to happen, maybe, maybe not? For me, it was always clear that it would be possible, but uh, only by recompiling or patching the original game. So that you have two different binaries, one for the Harmony and one for the uh, FTM32 chip of the plus card. Okay. So that um, that kind of uh, leads me... Let's see. So, okay. When did development for the DPC Plus start? And uh, who prompted it? Uh, it probably went in stops and starts over the years, but when was it, uh, what it, was it Steve that uh, kind of kicked it off with the scramble demo working? This time uh, at the beginning of the year, yes, it was Steve. Yeah, beginning of the year. Yeah. I sent uh, the scramble demo to Steve and that, that got him thinking. It, it was so close and to running. It, <laughs> it, and, and that's kind of what starts a lot of projects, is this tiny taste of it can be done. It's like, oh, we're so close, we just need this, and then and then you just start picking away at it, picking away at it. So can you, can you talk about the development process starting from now it's a possibility, leading up to what we're seeing on the screen right now? Well... The getting the, the so I'll just explain in DPC Plus and also CDFJ you have what's called custom code, which is the ARM routines that or ARM instructions that run on the processor on the cartridge. So uh, that that particular element, um, it wasn't quite though if that that was actually going to work. Um, sorry, I forgot your question. What were you asking? <laughs> uh, the develop the development timeline, the development process. So, w uh, Explain how it uh, how it went step by step. So once um, Steve, worked, there were these uh, vectors at the, in the ROM that said, when it boots up, do this and jump to this and do this initialization routine and then go to here and then in the code when it asks, go to this this place. But those sort of kind of vectors and kind of initialization parts, Steve kind of got working. That was what was kind of breathed life in, into it. Uh, once that started working, yep. it was more of a case of, uh, this flickers or this game is unstable. Let's try improve the code. Let's make this part tighter or ah, the, the space is too big. Let's try reduce the code size. Let's try roll these loops in together. Let's try optimize things. Let's optimize the C code to be faster or use less size or all kinds of permutations and um, try it on real hardware. Try it on 2600. Try it on 7800. Try it on your console gems, which is a doesn't behave in very well it's compared special. to our console. It's um, very special. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was really lots of trial and error. And uh, when it did crash, to use that tool to dump the memory inside the chip and then get either get that to Steve, or usually Steve, and yeah, he can try and work out what's going on. Or Jeff, uh, ideally, if anybody has yeah, yeah, anybody confused. Everybody has two names here, <laughs> right? Um, and if anybody has questions, you can just type them in the chat with the uh, all caps question and then and then your question afterwards. Um, and Thomas asks, Dirty, Dirty Harry got space rocks running by patching the addresses some years ago. Is that all that's needed? Yeah. No, no. Uh, <laughs> but if he, if he also patched it, patch the driver then maybe but uh, 
we have uh, we have our own driver, an open source driver. I don't know if uh, Dirty Harry uh, had uh, written uh, uh, own DCP Plus driver. Right. I would apologize so, to people for my terrible play, but they know what they know what they're getting. Into here. It's more about it being on the screen than being played well. <laughs> so you can play it all uh, any way you like. Um, so maybe talk a little bit about um, what is needed. Say somebody downloads a DPC Plus game from the Atari Age forums. And they go, okay, this is a DPC Plus game. I can just throw it on my Plus cart now that DPC Plus is working. Is that all that's needed? Or oh. you're talking about there needs to be an API, there maybe needs to be patching to the game. Maybe uh, talk a little bit about that. Is it as easy as downloading awesome. a game and running it? Or is there more to it? If it's a DCP Plus game for the Harmony card with custom code, in not a Batari basic DCP plus game, then uh, there's more needed. Then he needs a binary uh, for the plus card or for the Uno card. Right. Yeah, the um, Batari so... basic games are somewhat different. So they all use a common custom code library. So you've got, you know, in a Harmony game, you've, or at least DPC plus game, you've got a driver and then you've got the custom code. The driver is common to all games. The custom code is normally what you change from game to game, but with Atari Basic, their custom code is like a special library that everybody almost universally uses with DPC Plus uh, Atari Basic games. Um, and that library, we've been able to get the source code and recompile that for the Plus card. So the good thing about those games, DPC Plus Atari Basic games, is you almost don't need to do anything. As long as you can download it onto the Plus card, the plus cards API or the, the server in the back end will actually patch it with the right driver for the plus card and then patch the um, also the custom code as well. So we've made that decision because it, it just makes it easier to have a library of games that say the driver updates, you don't have to keep continually patching it and keeping a record of what has the latest driver. It can just do it automatically. It's almost invisible to the user um, the user of the plus card, it's almost as if it just one day decided to support working. Okay, excellent. Um, so, can you step us through how a developer might be able to make their game DPC plus game playable on the plus card? Is is the same procedure then as as a user or? Yeah, there's some more that they need to do, depending on if it's uh, done in assembly or if it's done in Atari Basic. Ah, uh, Atari Basic, they don't need to change anything. Just release on the forums; it's all good. Um, a DPC Plus game that has their own custom code, they just while they're compiling it for Harmony, they just can also compile it for Plus Code Cart, and then as part of the build process, have two outputs: one for Plus Cart, one is for um, Harmony. Okay, so it'd probably be good convention for them to now put an indicator on on the file name, possibly plus at the end, or like a PLUS or a plus or plus cart or some other indicator. And I guess the default, if it doesn't indicate that, would be, oh, this works on Harmony, but maybe not on plus cart. Yeah, um, they, they use the ACE extension, ACE, um, on the, the current version that we have. Um, we could also put, yeah, plus underscore plus cart in it, just to be able to keep it separate. But, um, yeah, the, yeah, the actual dot bin, we probably wouldn't use that on plus cart, just to differentiate the two. Mm, okay. And and uh, since you mentioned the ace, can you explain the difference between uh, a bin and ace and what elf is? Um, because you see ace uh, extensions on the plus cart for four so, games. A bin file is just a big pack, package of data. Um, so it could be anything, really. An ace and an elf is also a, a bin format as well. But we just use the extensions to help whatever's trying to interpret that file to distinguish what it is and to kind of highlight to the user what kind of file it is. So they're all bin files. An ace file has sort of a boiled-down compiled code. It's like a DOS or Windows EXE file just for the STM32 processor. 
So it's got a header in it that says, uh, this is the file. When you open it, jump to this memory, and then that's it. it it's a very kind of basic format. Um, the L format is more of, um, more of a higher level format. It's interpreted by whatever system um, you give it to. L format, L is when you're compiling C code, you get what's called an L file. It's like an intermediate file which has all of your little modules and all of the C code like routines kind of all in a, in a library. And then when you actually run the link command, then it boils it down into an executable that's just a big blob of data that runs. So ELF is probably is more easy to emulate. It's um, it's a format by um, Zach Attack that he's he's been using um, that is more of a high level um, constru construct, and it, it requires an interpreter to take that file and kind of whether it's an emulation or if it's running on the plus card to kind of know what to do with it. Whereas Ace is just as raw as it gets. You just run it. Okay. It's like native. Yes. The the bin um, the bin files are usually only sixty five or two k in in the in the plus okay. or in, in the Atari twenty six hundred, and uh, the Ace files contain ARM code. And uh, ARM, okay. ARM code that is compiled uh, to a fixed memory address, whereas the L files. Uh, uh, without fixed memory addresses, they are with symbols, and in the ELF file contains a symbol table, so the executable can find, uh, can relocate the code in memory. Yeah, it, it can be targeted for any number of processes, or, yeah, it's more of a, a universal higher level format. Whereas ACE is just, right. just made for the STM32 processor that's in the Flashcard and Unicart. Okay. Um, Vitoko has a question from the chat. Uh, he says, will the update be available for all versions of the Plus Cart, Old, Original, Duo, and the Brazilian <laughs> Cart as well? Yes. Yeah, I don't see why not. <laughs> yeah. But they, they do have to use the most up-to-date up -to firmware, but yeah, oh. or at least one that supports the ACE format. So if they've downloaded firmware in the past to update their um, Uno cart, um, they just need to download the most up-to-date version that you'll be putting out, and they'll be able to run these games just as we're playing them now. So I should probably explain the Uno cart. It does use the same processor as the Plus cart, um, but its process is a little different. It doesn't have APIs and servers and all that kind of stuff in the background. So what um, Jet Set Illy did is he's made a little utility that you give it a... Um, a DPC Plus Atari Basic game, and it converts it into an ACE file that you can then load onto the Unicart. So the Unicart needs to run a special firmware that was created by Zach Attack, and this special firmware kind of unifies the Plus Cart and the Unicart to kind of have a common format that runs on both of them. Um, because they have slight differences in hardware, the the data bus is shifted or something like that, so it just needed some way to be able to kind of mull, mull that over kind of thing, to make it kind of abstracted so that it works on either hardware. Okay, and, and that's that's probably a good that good thing that you now, now have a, a unified um, version of the firmware, so it's not... Uh, as confusing and it's easier to make updates to the wow. uh, to the firmware wow. if you make updates and, and continuing on with that question another question from the Atari age forums did the fixes that Zach attack made in the experimental 2.3.18 make it into the DPC plus update these fixes had nothing to do with DCP plus this was a fix for the supercharger uh, BIOS and uh, this will be included in the next update here but it had nothing to do okay. with, TP, with PPC Plus. Yeah, so it's not being forked off. It, everything is is uh, been incorporated from the last update. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, we're going to switch games again. But you're 30 seconds early. Uh, oh, that's what you're doing with your watch. Oh, you can skip that one. Right. Just go to that one. Okay. Uh, let's see. <coughs> so... Almost all DPC Plus games are developed using Batari Basic, like most of them, yeah, I would say. Yeah, the vast majority. Um, there's, 
there's lots of them, like maybe 80 of them or 70 or something like that, that we found at least. There may be more out there, but I've been hunting for them, and I found about 80 or so. Yeah. So is there anything that needs to be done in uh, the Batari Basic compiler? Does that need to be updated um, to work with? Nope. So people developing right now with Batari Basic are good to go. They don't have to worry about it. Um, they don't need to update the Batari Basic to develop games that will work on the Plus card. Yeah, they just no. got to keep their library the same as it comes shipped with, the standard library, and they should all be good. Some people have slightly modified their library, and it has some kind of humorous results when we try to put the original driver in when it's expecting its own custom driver. Um, one hmm. game is, uh, you know, Button. You know? Button? Yeah, Button. You know that game that it came out just recently. You got this screen, you got to jump around, and you can jump off walls. And Remember Button? Um Anyway, that game uh, starts and you just kind of no. you fall through the, oh, the button, screen. Button, okay. Yeah, button. It sounds like you're saying bussin, B-U-S-S-I-N. Uh, That's a <laughs> yeah, excellent game. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, um, that game runs and the music plays, but you kind of just keep falling through the screen. It just it, it's requiring a different, <laughs> slightly different library. So yeah, there oh, are some games that um, have a slightly different library but do run, but like I don't know font is backwards or there's some slight glitch, but it's still playable. <laughs> So, yeah, as long as the, oh. D the DPC Plus Batari Basic custom uh, C code remains the original Harmony one, we can swap it out and it, it actually can work out um, if it's... There's two variants. They've got a slight, very slight difference, but the Plus card can actually swap both variants out. The two variants are the driver, not the, not the custom code. Oh, sorry, you're right. Yeah, the, the driver, yeah. Excellent. A lot of this is above my pay grade, but <laughs> we'll continue on. Because um, I've, I've never made, I've only made a game in assembly, not using the arm arm chip at all. So a lot of it's like, ah, mm, okay. <laughs> um, I kind of answered this question about the Uno cart, oh which my. is good. So what currently, what percentage that you would estimate of all all DPC Plus games are currently able to run on the Plus cart? Um, of the Atari Basic, probably 90%. Some of them, yeah. most, almost all of them run. Some of them might have a glitch that prevents play. Some might have a glitch that's kind of funny. Um, we can actually show some funny ones on the show if you, if you like. Yep, yeah, I, I have one on the list, so... Uh... We can we can show that we can we can skip to that one next, which is kind of funny, and it's uh, very similar to the the button button thing you were describing, right? Yeah. Um, so when people encounter, like when this is released, and people encounter uh, a game that has some funny bug or it's not running, um, they would report it to you. Where is the best place to go to to report it? Report any issues? Oops. We'll probably make a forum in the end for Atari Basic um, games and Plus Cut, and it could also be um, a humorous place as well, where people can post, "Hey, this did this funny thing. Check it out," and um, <laughs> we can do some research into into why it happened, and um, yeah, see if we can update it. And the idea is that we can change the driver later, at least for the Plus Cut. We can improve the driver over time, and we just keep. We can right. have a a testing version that developers have that we use in the background, and then the production right. version, all of the other people we use um, that works, and we can just keep refining it over time. And yeah, this this idea of having the server swap bits of it in real time as you download it is, is going to be good for in refining the driver later on if we encounter these kind of bugs. Yeah. Uh, Dimax in the uh, chat asks... Can you use this cart with the Atari 2600 Plus and play Champ Games and 7800 Homebrew? A lot of questions in there. <laughs> um, no. No. Short, no. Short answer. <laughs> it's a no. short answer. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the Atari 2600 Plus just plays games with ROMs in it, not games with any smarts in it. Yeah, so it is expecting pretty much one, one binary on the cart 
fed to it immediately. Um, we covered something uh, uh, on the last show that um, Batari is, is working on or has done. A little dip switch uh, SD card thing that loads, essentially feeds one game one to at the time, Atari yeah. 2600 yeah. Plus. It, it tries to dump, so, dump the ROM from the cartridge. Yeah. And in case yeah, of I mean, the plus card, it would be half of the internet to dump. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I guess the Uno card, you can flash a single game to it. And I believe I've done that way in the past. And so it would be the, similar to the Harmony card, but it, it kind of foregoes all the features at that mm -hmm. point of the plus card and harmony card if you're just putting one game on it but you know it is kind of possible in that way um but essentially no is is the short answer <laughs> and long answer um so we have unholy up on the screen and there is a, a funny bug that was uh discovered so if you go to the just slightly to the left just a tiny bit oh too much um uh, if you go down the left-hand side of the screen, uh, you will... Something funny will happen. Oh, so, there you go. Ah! <laughs> so this is you fall down an invisible pit. When we were, were testing um, the driver, we noticed this kind of early on, and it was like, okay, that must be just something wrong with this driver. We need to refine it. And it's kind of... It's still with us now. What's interesting is when we recompile um, custom code or the, the driver... Sometimes that spot of where you fall through the floor moves on the screen. Like sometimes it's in the middle, sometimes oh. it's at the bottom. <laughs> it's like the time travel of it changes the, the position of a chair and then changes history. It's just like it's <laughs> kind of random how that happens. And yeah, it's so weird. one of the funniest bugs. We haven't really seen a game that does something else like that. Um, they either kind of work or they, they don't. But yeah, Unholy is just a funny one. <laughs> we did have one build once, one rare occasion where it did have the falling bug for some reason and then we just rebuilt it again and then there it was again so yeah we still got to find that still got to work out what that is <laughs> super strange and and well after you told me about this bug i was actually playing it and on a screen where there's two enemies like this if you go to around the same position before you kill the enemies your health will start going down as well without them even being close to you yeah. So something is tied to a magic spot on a, on the screen that it, is it triggering me, a collision. Yeah, it's either the screen is a, a screen where you can fall or a screen where you can get kind of hurt by the floor. And I think that's what the difference yeah. is. Right. So it's it's thinking you're in a spot that you're not actually in. Something something like that's happening. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, continue on. Showing off the games in the background, Darcy being somebody called him as the screensaver of today, <laughs> which is. Which is nice. Did you have a specific one? Um, you could just continue on. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. Um, uh oh. <laughs> trouble. Uh, what is the when is the public rollout for DPC Plus planned? Um, because right now you can individually um, enable specific plus carts for testing purposes. Um, do you feel it's at a place where the public would be satisfied with it and people can play a lot of games right now, like you said, a, a vast majority of Atari basic games. Um, is the rollout coming soon? Yes. After yeah. I, <laughs> I think I will switch all, all other plus card users to the new API after the show. Or after the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And, yeah. and, and what about for the Uno cart uh, users as well? Yes, uh, uh, Steve, Jeff Adili has just made a brand new tool today uh, that has the latest driver in it um, that he will publish as well for Uno cart users to be able to uh, download uh, Atari basic DBC games and convert them into a format that they can throw on their uh, Uno cart. So at the moment, it's uh, closed source, but we, he'll make it uh, public. Oh, that's that's really excellent that that it's in a place that you're you're satisfied with it. And once it goes public, people will be telling you all sorts of bugs, I'm sure. And yeah. you'll be able to uh, 
get that up to close to 100% pretty quick. Yeah. Or at least have a list of the things that you need to fix. We, we wanted to get it to a point where the community can kind of take it on where most of everything is figured out and then we can refine certain <laughs> parts of it. And we've got a bigger testing base and testing number of consoles to test from. Um, yeah. We should find more things that go wrong and fix them. Yeah, luckily my console provides a, a lot of uh, testing possibilities. <laughs> it's always been a, a blessing and a curse uh, in terms of developers. A blessing because it finds edge cases. And there's actually been an option put into Stella because of my specific uh, console. Um, so it, it's got timing issues where it's just on the edge of specific timings. Um, but it's also a curse because, you know, you play games and it's like, what is happening in this game? It's, it's crazy. Um, but I think it's mostly to do with the RGB um, upgrade that I have in, in the system. It has some color timing issues, uh, play field timing issues. Um, so this leads me to the next inevitability beyond DPC+, Plus, which is CDFJ, CDFJ+, Plus, CDFJ++. Plus Plus now um <laughs> that uh um champ games keeps uh, pushing the envelope of what's possible on the 2600 so how far along are you with um cdfj and how far off do you feel that um support will be for for these advanced games uh so it's, it's got most <laughs> of the main structure implemented it can run the, the custom code it can run a lot of the registers, um, the audio doesn't work yet. That's that's not implemented. Um, it's also unstable on James' console. Works on mine. Works on <laughs> Alna Fur's console. But yeah, we've got works a, my seventy eight hundred. <laughs> yeah, it works on James seventy eight hundred. That's it. So that's probably what yeah. you're going to show it on today. Um, so we've got yeah. a couple of demos um, that do work um, that we can that we can show off. We'll do that right now. There you go. Have another joystick. I was gonna say you gotta plug it in. <laughs> so let but me basically get every that. CDFJ game you have to recompile it for the, the plus cut. There's just no getting yeah, around okay. it. it. Yes, unfortunately. Luckily, the... there's only. Oh, luckily, there's only a few few developers that program in CDFJ, and only a handful of games that come out every year. So it's not, it's not too bad. Yeah, no, and, and DPC Plus, I'd say most of the developers program it in Batari Basic, and they probably don't want to know about recompiling stuff. They just want it simple. So <laughs> that's for them. Yeah. And, and I'm sure they would want their games to be more available to more people who have these carts. I'm sure there's, they've had requests because... Um, the Unicart and the Plus Card are quite quite inexpensive, and you can build your own, which is which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, and in some countries they they use a lot of Plus Cards and Unicards. I know Brazil has a lot of um, of right. Plus Cards and Unicards. So the things like the um, the competition that that are held on Atari Edge, it, it allows people in in those areas to be able to play all of the games available. You don't have to use Stella or, or Harmony, you can also use the plus card and Unicart. So it sort of opens up the amount of people that can enjoy, I know, the art and, and those games in, in other countries. That Yeah, that's great. So we are on the 7800 right now, because my 2600 is special. Um, and uh, we've got a CDFJ kind of um, demo instructional program it's uh something made by spiceware called collect and it's to teach people how to program in cdfj and um so that's what we have right now and it has scrolling menu on the screen mm -hmm. um press the button i think i have to do a reset to get to the next yes. part there we go and so there's two characters actually i can plug in the I'm winning i'm winning Get it, get him, Darcy, get him. <laughs> oh, Team Blue. So there's not much to this uh, 
to this demo. It's not really a game. And you can move around the second player as well. But yeah. this is to show off that code can run, it's CDFJ code can run um, on the plus card. Yeah, this is showing that it can access the CDFJ registers, it can uh, get to the custom code, and it can be uh, stable runtime-wise. Um, and also on the screen, I know on your other console, James, it's, it's runtime stable, but the screen kind of doesn't, it rolls. So, yeah, yeah it's really just the structure, the basic structure there to run a CDFJ game is there. Um, games that have more going on and more crazy stuff, I don't know how they'll react yet to the driver, whether we need to increase performance, but these are, this is the early days, basically. Yeah. And I know um, well, that's that's great. So we're gonna run a second game. This is actually a game um, called Adventureland, and it's a text-based uh, game that you uh, type with the joystick. There you go. Cool, cool. And both of these games, the source code was available, so we're able to recompile it for the uh, plus part and make a build for the plus part. It's important, like I see. any any game that you find out there, uh, it, you need to have the source code to be able to, to make it work. But really, it's the developer can choose whether they want to release it for Unicart and Pluscart in their build processing, basically. Because they, they're the right. owner of the source code. Right, excellent. And, and you'll be able to provide them with everything they need to do to build their game for, for the Uno Pluscart. That's the plan, to have something on GitHub that's, that we keep updating that has um, the method to build it, whether Windows or Linux, we're trying to, that's the aim, to have a, a process in place. Yeah. Or GN. Um, there's a question from the chat uh, from Thomas. Uh, so a CDFJ game could be released using a board with the Uno Kart Plus Kart chip instead of the Melody Aria whatever boards. And that seems very feasible. Yes. Potentially, yeah. It, it seems like a waste, though. It just download a binary. Yeah. But uh, yeah, potentially. I hadn't actually thought of that. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, I don't know what the costs, uh, cost comparison are, or if anybody might be thinking of, of doing mass production for a release. Yeah, obviously, costs go down as you order more. Um, but that's uh, another avenue for either uh, big distributors or even independent distributors who want to say build their own um, boards because it is open source they'll be able to do it completely from scratch and distribute their own games using the um, hardware developed for the uno and plus card and even have wi-fi capabilities in their game maybe Potentially, if, yeah. it, if it's needed, but CDFJ and ECP Plus have no plus ROM uh, functions. So oh, the Wi Fi okay. cabin. There's no accessibility? Yeah. Um, it's, it's because the drivers are very tight and uh, there's no, no space to do the Wi Fi. Oh, no. <laughs> like, absolutely no, no possibility yeah. or just no possibility right now? Uh, we already have problems to include the exit function. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's one thing we want to add. So in Pluscut, yes. you can do write and reset, and it gets you out of some um, games that support that. So to make it more couch compliant, to be able to switch between games, that's, that's the future plan. I've got it working, but it doesn't work universally on all consoles. Some consoles, it has some corruption. So we're, we're, that's still a, a development. But... Um, if we get it working and it works on many consoles, we can add it to the, the production stream. Oh, that's 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 cool. And uh, and the Mattress Monkey game that we're going to be playing next has an exit function, which is so cool. It's yeah. so cool. It feels so modern. And I can't wait to show that off. Um, so... Um, I think that's all the questions that I have. Is there anything that else you guys want to talk about or anything that I missed? Or if there's any more... Oh, question just came up in the, the chat while well, you guys think about that. Uh, Thomas asked another question. Since the Uno Plus Kart chips are faster than the Harmony chips, 
Uh, there's potential for even more advanced CDFJ games, more off-screen CPU power. Uh, yes. Is there, I guess, yes. more potential? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I think so be, I don't know, I don't... I think it'd be Go more ahead. sensible to, to build with the, the Harmony in mind and then the Plus Cut runs it too, though. It, it would be a shame to make something in a format that is essentially the format of the Harmony that doesn't work backwards on it. So there are other ways to be able to run more advanced games on um, on the Plus Cut and Unicut with uh, some of the Ace and Health formats that are, that are coming out. So that, they're more of a more native experiment. PDFJ and EPC Plus are, were developed for the Harmony. So, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I would think that... A, more and more developers are releasing their binaries online for sale. Um, so I would think that they would have that in mind that they wouldn't want to exclude. Now they can include people with Uno Plus cards, but they would not want to exclude Harmony and, and go the opposite way yeah. and develop for a uh, cross cross cartridge would be obviously the best plan so that people would be, oh, I only have an R I only have a Harmony and I can't run your game. That doesn't really make sense. No. So it's kind of sad. <laughs> but keeping that in mind, we are going to be playing Mattress Monkeys next, which only runs on Uno Kart it's and time. Plus Kart, which is which is something. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure they they could uh, compile it for the Harmony Kart as well. And I'm not sure if it's pushing the a CPU limits of the ARM chip or anything. Yeah. Potentially. Uh, <laughs> there, uh, there are there are lazy developers. Thomas says, uh, "Too slow. Throw more CPU power at it." <laughs> I, I don't know if they're if um, John Champo is getting close to the limits of his games running on the carts. I know that a new add-on for the Harmony Cart is being developed so that his games can be played through binary download right now some of his can't be and can only be emulated but um so he does push the limits quite a bit um mm. so is there anything that um i missed that you guys want to talk about um, um i think all of this couldn't have been possible without um without uh without steve jet set illy so he's really the mastermind mm. behind this recent sort of spark in the project to make this mm -hmm. happen. Um, without his expertise, it probably would have just been a, a few mumbles here and there and it would have just died again. So, <laughs> Right. Yeah, yep. it is truly a, a community effort. I mean, even, even something as simple as me testing the games on my weird 2600, um, everybody kind of comes together because everybody benefits from being able to play these amazing games and have a diversity of hardware to be able to play them on and it's absolutely amazing now that people will be able to play download games that they weren't able to play before onto the plus card because i know a lot of people you know don't have infinite money to spend and some of the like the plus card and uno cart are a lower cost alternative and some people only have that so it opens up a, a whole new world of gaming which is which is super awesome Yeah, a lot of the community oh, writes for DPC Plus games, so it's yeah, only natural to want to support it, be able to play it on the Plus card. Yep, a lot of development in the Batari Basic. A lot of people use Batari Basic as their as their uh, stepping off point for uh, starting to program because mm -hmm. of its uh, more friendly environment. Um, Pseudographic says, looking forward to playing Load Runner on the Uno cart. Uh, Thrust says, yes, there are a lot of games close to the limits of the Harmony card. Oh, boy. Um, uh, D-Train asks, is there an update on Stella RT, or are we not talking about that today? I just caught here, so I don't know what we're focused on today. Uh, I, I'm not aware of uh, that Stella RT update, but uh, are you in the know on that? No, there's no update for the last, <laughs> for the last few months. But I will okay. will go back yeah. to the project in the next month. Okay, there you go. 
a stellar ray tracing. Th uh, Thomas, <laughs> Thomas asks also a question. What does Batari think about this? Did you talk to him? No. <laughs> <laughs> laying down the hard questions now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Some t tough um, questions here. It, it's more of a case of just wanted to see what was possible and the, the source codes out there. Let's see what we can do. Um, really, it was it was a, a educational exercise that sort of turned into a practical one. Um, yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys dedicated the time and put put all this effort into into upgrading it because it's just more more possibilities, more uh, availability for for the community. Um, and, and it's, and it's really awesome. And it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to both of you today and, uh, Al to see your, put a, a face to the name and, uh, to talk to you again, Marco, uh, once again. And, uh, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to say before we let you go? Uh, shout out to the Harmony developers, putting that innovation in years ago to make a cartridge that has advanced features and graphics and bound to push the 2600 and it's kind of cultivated the scene um since you know i think was it 2009 it came out the harmony cart i can't remember now but um yeah cool. all those um making games amazing and uh, a, a whole new audience can just um, appreciate the advancements in, in game technology and yeah so w well done for creating that innovation yeah absolutely mm -hmm. Uh, so thank you both for coming on the show and uh, allowing us to demonstrate the new possibilities with the Plus Cart and Uno Cart. And like they said, it'll be rolled out very shortly, right after they get off the get off the uh, video conference. They'll uh, so keep uh, looking in the in the forums. Is there a a forum dedicated to the Uno Plus Cart? A sub forum? Or will you be posting it in the 2600? Maybe in the Plus Card Club. Plus Card Club, yes. yes. That's right. So if you haven't so, joined that and you do have a Plus Card or Uno Card, definitely uh, join up to that. Is it a, it's an open open club? It's an open club, yes. Excellent. Excellent. At so Atari thank you. Age. Yeah, at Atari Age Forums. That's right. <laughs> So thank you both for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, we will see you online in the forums and in the chat. So uh, talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks for having us, James bye -bye. and Darcy. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. See ya. Awesome. Warning. Warning. The treat ball is loose. The treat, the treat ball, ball is loose. loose. See ya. <laughs> Guess what? We've had an up... You you didn't hear that. He might have heard it. It's quite loud in my ear. He he looks slightly he looks like interested. He, he looks interested. Um, Here, there's... do it again. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor little kitten. Does this one go off automatically when that one goes off? Uh, it goes off. Oh my god, music. Nobody heard that except for me. Just now, must have started automatically. <clears throat> okay. So we've had an upgrade Weird times. to the Treat Ball. Oh. If you can grab the Treat Ball Arena. Oh thank you, B.R. Pocock. Oh, should have done Treat so we can get his performance on an empty stomach. Well, you'll have to take that into consideration. <laughs> so somebody suggested, now the person can uh, speak up about that, that <laughs> the Treat Ball Arena be upgraded to combat and here it is there we go but they can't see it you're covering it up oh but you... i think that the cat is in, an important <laughs> part of the combat <laughs> yes of the treat ball situation it is there you go so that's Tank the cat you Pong just have play field. Combat a stinky play field. ball of treats <laughs> are you excited so put about about 10 there that should be enough yeah, I did. You know, this I can yesterday. do exactly ten if you'd prefer. No, no, no. Just about ten. Okay. About right. ten. Nine to eleven in that range. And if you can minimize that. Here, I'll give you that. 
um, so we can get the chat on the screen there. Meh. There we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? There you go, courtesy of Beer Pocock. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you once again uh, to Wolfgang and Marco. Needs moving tanks. Well, that's that's the <laughs> that's, second upgrade. <laughs> so what I did is I um, took a screenshot of combat and um, measured the box. Mm -hmm. And one dimension <clears throat> is a bit bigger than than it is, but I kept the aspect ratio. And then took it into Photoshop and cut those pieces out, made them fit on a piece of paper and printed that out, cut them out and then traced around them and then filled them in with Sharpie. So this is, the placement is not 100% perfect, but it is close enough. That it is this close is enough that much you can't it. tell. Yeah. Due to the uh, three quarter view. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that kind of saves me there. <laughs> but we'll have to get the moving tanks going. Oh, what I could get is like uh, little toy tanks that you wind up or something, let them loose in there while he's trying to get treats out of there and he has to avoid the tanks. I don't know what or he thinks. Or he has about to tanks. smack the tanks and the tanks contain the. Uh, put tracks on the oh, ball. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and the ball moves around on its own. <laughs> okay, so let's pop this back into here. Did you get all of them? Or do you take the treat away? Ready. Oh, you're yeah, not done yet. If the field was bigger, you could have barriers in 3D that the ball could bounce off. Good idea. Again. <laughs> Ooh, 3D barriers. <laughs> now, Darcy could 3D print some uh, some of those barriers. But we do need a, a a bigger arena for that to work, because oh. otherwise it'll just get trapped on one corner. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. it's too small and behind the ball wouldn't even get in there. That's not. Uh... I swear we thought about this before. We talked about that. Some some three D structure. Yeah, right? I was gonna put divots so that the ball would like roll into one, and then they would when they knocked it, it would. Anyways, it was so it wouldn't free roll. He would have to work a little harder for to get the treats out. Right? Yeah, and to keep it from. I can't remember exactly what the problem was. <laughs> no, that should that would work. Yeah. And you were going to do it like tile based. So you That's what I was going to do. Together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would have to have a, a barrier around the edge. Otherwise, well, just... I was thinking that, you know, to begin oh, with, at least fitted. it would go in the box and then we could like just add to it. Uh, we could yeah, replace yeah, yeah. the box with like barriers eventually. Well, that would know. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A mini golf or soccer. <sighs> How would you motivate a cat to put a ball in a hole? You would have to get the hole to give a treat. Like if when the ball goes to the bottom of the hole, it would trigger something that would dispense a treat. Now that's a lot of moving parts and electronics, not a ton, but, and then you would, then you, after you put it all together, you'd be like, is he even interested? And you would hope to hell he would be. Or they'd be otherwise you'd be like, what did I do all this for? <laughs> what a waste of time. Next version would be over a 42 inch LED display. There are cat games uh, with touch yeah, screens. That makes sense. Yeah, because right? we used to have that on the iPad for. Yeah, and they would. Of course, I've like always it. thought if he does that. You don't want them to be get too much screen time. No, because then they see something on the TV and they start smacking your big TV and it's like, oh my god. Yeah, that's way too much. Uh, okay, so. It is time to move on to the game today, uh, which is Mattress Monkeys. So let's take a little look at uh, how this started. And uh, this is by um, 8-Bit Poet, Matthew Halpern, and Zach Attack, Zachary Scalero. 8-Bit uh, Poet did uh, Fly Hunter, and Mattress Monkeys, and Zach attacked it. Gorilla, Mattress Monkeys, Octopusher for the 2600, 7800, and Wushu Masters for the 2600. Um, so this started off as kind of a game concept, um, which a lot of good games start off with like, okay, I've got this mechanic that I want to put in some game, mm -hmm. and, and then build a game around it. So this is... Kind of the game mechanic. So he posted this November 30th, 2022, about a year and a half ago. 
Uh, 8 Bitpoet says, So I've been toying around with the idea of using an animated play field as a game mechanic. In this concept art, I'm using the play field to represent a waterbed, dark green, with the physics that interact with the player sprites to dip when landed on and propel player sprites where it swells. I'm not aware of any games that have this sort of physics simulation, but it could make for some unique gameplay. Think Circus, which is the seesaw, which mm -hmm. uh, is similar. One lands, the other one takes off. Uh, meets Frogger, because there's rewards to get. Um, as a non-developer, I'm wondering if this is even feasible. One. Two, if I have false expectations of what could be achieved with missile sprites. See non-player sprites layer. If there's anyone crazy enough to collaborate with me to make this into a real game. And there was people crazy enough. So let's see. So in, in the initial iteration, he's got like it looks. a monkey down there. I mean, there's three monkeys, but a monkey down there, a monkey that's been propelled up, some sort of rope up top to climb on, move on, um, hang on to. Like a curtain rod or something. Yeah, and um, a banana to get. And he's uh, here's the background. The play field. Oh, okay, the top thing is play field as well. The back of the bed, um, the water bed, non-player sprites down the left and right, and the monkey. Here are the player sprites. Now, you had three three monkeys to begin with, um, but I believe that's gone down to two as well. And they're talking all about the upgrades, which is very exciting. Okay. So that is the uh, cat's all done. So that's the background on it. So let's get this ready on our system here. Um, so it's this joystick and it is a zero, one or two player game. So I'm gonna let you play one player first, but I'm gonna plug in this controller. Is it in shared with me? Uh, it's in my ROMs. I believe it's the only one. So don't load it yet. I won't load it yet. Do not. Do not load. Let me plug in the second joystick so I can join in later. Okay. So this is an exclusive world premiere. Okay, now you can press a button. Mattress monkeys. <laughs> okay, so. The objective of the game is to collect as many flies and bonus bananas. Gotta get the alliteration in. Uh, while avoiding the deadly ceiling fan. After the first stage, the player must also avoid falling off the bed. Um, controls. While your monkey is on the mattress, you actually can put it on zero players right now. And it plays itself. Um, while your monkey is on the mattress, use the joystick to move left and right. Once airborne, you can slightly influence your monkey's direction with the joystick. Uh, the button will pause the game. During the challenge stage, use the joystick to move the fly, your fly up, down, left, right, and diagonally. The Try flies look amazing. They're perfect. It's a little white and yeah, black. They, like, that is the correct word. They are literally perfect. It's yeah, so they are. <laughs> that you can, they're so tiny, but yeah. you can see the wings yeah, flapping. very good. Like, how can you make a fly that tiny, but still look like a fly? Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. Um, I don't so, know why monkeys want flies, but they're probably like, nom nom. They, they hate the flies. Get out of here, flies. Get in my mouth, flies. Nom 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 nom. Cats eat flies. I don't know if monkeys eat flies. Probably. Um, so in the challenge stage, you oh, play as the... Oh, one of them the hit the fan and got knocked off the screen. Oh, yeah, don't hit the fan. Monkey, it don't hurt the monkey. Um, so in the challenge stage, you play the fly. Here we go. Uh, so you fly up, down, left, right, and diagonal, try and burst all the bubbles. So funny. I swear to God, 
<laughs> like two days ago, yeah. I had this like, oh, uh, perspective of a fly running from people trying to squat it or grab it or what have you. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I weird. bet I bet a modern game has done. That. They've done paper airplanes. For me, it was like the time thing where like flies are all like, like you you're like swat swat swat, but to them you're all like. Oh. <laughs> and they're all like. Because the flies are so <laughs> They just casually fast. jump out of the way. You know? They do. <laughs> like, Anyways. they've done slow, they've had to do slow motion video to look at a fly and its fast reactions because you can't see how fast it goes with the human eye. Like they've seen, they're trying to figure out how a fly goes off the ceiling and takes off. Um, but they had to use a slow motion video camera. Yeah. I didn't, I haven't seen that. That would be very cool. Yeah. But yeah. Because the flies are so fast. Um, scoring. Flying bananas value change based on the current stage, so points go up as the stages progress. Um, during this challenge stage, each bubble pops is worth five points. Uh, strategy. Positioning your monkey various distances from the monkey landing on the mattress will influence your height and trajectory of your monkey. Find the sweet spot that will help you reach the flies and the bonus banana without being thrown into the ceiling fan. Okay, so let's get you going. Press the button. Exit. Now. Okay, that if, menu was also very good. Yes. That was really good. Oh, this game is super well done. But before we start playing, go through the menu here. Credits, previews, music off, exit. And I don't think I've ever seen this in an Atari 2600 game with exit as a menu item. Yeah. Which can only really be done in the plus card as far as I know. Um, because there are certain combinations you can do on plus cart enabled games um, that'll exit you out. But this has a menu with the exit, and I asked the developers if they're aware of any other 2600 game that ever has had an exit as the menu. So give it a try now. And you go back to the menu. It's so modern. Like, it feels like... So a, modern. Exit. It is amazing. Ex yeah, yeah, like yeah. one of the, you know, modern PS4 controllers. Like, oh, exit out of the game. You go back to the menu. <laughs> Holy smokes, just joined. What have I missed? Everything! Everything. For the fly brain, time runs much slower. If you want to catch one, for the fly, it feels like your hand is moving in slow motion. Yeah. I think that's an awesome idea yeah. for a game. You're in fly time. And... You're super fast compared to everything else, but yeah. they're still like got all these fly swatters and their hands and there's dogs yeah. and cats trying to jump at you. And making, frogs with their tongues. Make it amazing. Yeah, you go outside yeah. and there's different enemies outside the house. And 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 you get the closer the call, the more points you get. That's right. <laughs> Just dodging it. Yeah. There's rotten bananas. You're a fly, you so it's get. easy to not get hit. But mm -hmm. like do you want to have an easy life, or do you want to be the coolest fly on the block? <laughs> the coolest fly on the corpse. Uh, your or game is plus carp, plus carp compliant. Uh, will that exit option be on a physical release? What would happen if you exited out of the cart, but there's nothing there? No, it, it wouldn't be on the physical release, because there's nothing to go to. Well, you'd have it, and it would just <laughs> reboot send the game? it back to the game. <laughs> yeah, reboot the game. Okay, so jump into... Uh, I mean, I don't know how... I'm interested... To me, it's interesting that you can exit to the cart. Yeah. It's, it's... Because it, it exited to the cart where you were previously. Not just starting restarting the cart. Yeah. Back to the, the directory you're in. So it either remembered where you were... It does. ...and told it to say that, yeah. or it... It would remember where you were. Yeah. Really. That's the only option, though. Yeah, it's super cool. Cool, cool music, okay. too. Uh, player. Cats have an unbelievable response time. They are one of the fastest things on the planet. Yeah. Uh, if you watch cat versus snake videos, yeah, destroys it's the like snake. snakes are fast, and cats are like, I laugh at your speed. <laughs> the cat, snake. Snake goes, and the cat goes... You want to know though, I but but it's not quite that straight because I would play slappy cakes with my cats and yeah. they would be so mad because I would stomp the crap out of them. They're letting you win, man. No, they're just like like when you do that. Oh, on their hands. Game, oh, okay. They're like 
Yeah, they're, I don't know what it is. There's something about that. That's not, but they do the same thing to a snake's head and they're just like, bam! Psh, no! Psh, psh, psh. Okay, start up a single player. All right. So you are the yellow monkey. Oh, no buttons. So up for jump. Get those flies. Oh, you fell off the bed. Wait. I'm the brown monkey. Are okay. oh, you the brown monkey? So it's hard to tell. So no, the, 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 the it's playing without me. Somehow. Did you pick one player? I did, but zero? like it's jumping. Oh well, you'll be bounced up in the air. Oh, I so see. You're yellow. Here you go. What is this exit you guys are talking about? Oh, there's an exit in the menu that exits back oh, to and the plus if you, part. Oh, oh my god! If that you poor land, monkey. if you land on the edge of the bed, you automatically walk. Cart pops out. There you go. That's what needs to happen when you exit. <laughs> ah! Ah! Um, okay, so the making of mattress monkeys. In November 2022, I posted some concept art for a game inspired by Circus Atari. Only instead of uh, clowns jumping on a seesaw to pop balloons, it would be monkeys bouncing on a waterbed to catch flies. No paddles required. Prior to Mattress Monkeys, I had volunteered my creative skills to assist Zack Attack with the graphics in his game Octopusher. In turn, he was drawn to the technical challenge of my game concept and offered to collaborate. Initially, the artwork presented uh, was thought to be beyond the capabilities of the 2600. But through multiple iterations of my graphics and Zach's ah! display kernel, we were just successful in rendering a working prototype that was virtually identical to my mock-up. Now, the wave motion of the playfield is so, so amazing that playfield can... Um, <laughs> is there a blood code for when you hit the ceiling fan? I think the screen just flashes red, right? And the, the monkey goes, ah! Oh, BR Pocock has reported they posted the DPC Plus update to the forum, so you can now update your Plus cards, maybe? Um, plus store email announcement. Oh, okay. And I believe ah. the Plus cards will just be automatically updated because you don't need to do anything. Um, guess I need to plop my Plus card into my 7800 so it updates. Yes. So we enlisted the amazing talent of Marco J for the music, who we just had on the show. He was able to faithfully recreate the Kevin McLeod classic tune, Monkeys Spinning Monkeys, ah. using the TIA tracker software. Yep, great music. Yep, no update for the Plus Card firmware needed. It's auto. Ah. Automatic. Um, throughout the development process, we'd find inspiration that would eventually add to the scope of the project. We included multiple stages of difficulty by progressively narrowing the bed size. Uh, we added the challenge stage where the player assumes the role of the fly. Darcy hasn't made it to the second stage yet. But yeah, he's not gonna. <laughs> what's, what's happening? Are you dying from the fan? I, I am, but also I, I'm not doing a very good job of catching these flies. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm afraid it'll be left up to you, as usual, to uh, ah, achieve any uh, poor monkey. score. <laughs> Uh, we added the challenge stage for the player who seems ah! to roll the fly and has to avoid the monkeys while popping bubbles. And we hit a couple Easter eggs, because who doesn't like surprises? From that initial post in 2022, the game has gone from a naive concept to a fully realized Atari 2600 homebrew oh. that's available right now to download and play right okay, now. Okay, so when so, you they... leave the bed, you lose your points. Oh my god, what? Do you? Yeah. Oh no. I had six. Oh no, all the flies got spat out. And now, and now off, and then I lost. So you have two. I think I right may now. have caught a uh, fly. Oh, zero. Oh my goodness. Maybe you lose six when you fly off? Oh, maybe it's a certain amount, yeah. A banana seems to be worth like four. A multi-load supercharger games working. I think that's the one we were talking about on the show, which was update 18. So this one will include the updates that came in 18. Oh, it will be available for download after this show. 8-Bit Poet, uh, the developer for this game. Um, so this will be available to download after the show. Thank you for uh, making it available after the show so people don't run away. <laughs> 
three points. So, uh, eight bit ah. point, can you cut? Um, oh, but if you get, if you get, it's only if you jump off. If you get knocked off, you don't lose your points. Oh, yeah. So don't jump off. That makes it's sense. okay to get knocked off <laughs> violently, but don't don't be dumb. Don't like because like the, you're playing hot lava, except they're everything but the bed is hot lava. <laughs> That's right. Okay, let's play two player. Okay. I am the brown monkey. Darcy is ah! the monkey that just got spit into a fan. Banana! Oh my god! The fan! It's deadly. How? Oh my god. We're almost done. <laughs> so the safe thing to do is to stay to the ah! sides. Game over for you. Oh, oh for, both for both of us. us yeah. Okay. You win because you got the most. Oh, I see. Oh. No buttons. No, the buttons are fine. You pause <laughs> the game. True. Yeah. You need a break? You can uh, pause the game. Ah! So, 8 bit poet, yeah. up and down don't do. Wait. <laughs> Trying a You're strategy. Trying uh, it's too late now. Oh, get the most points and die. Oh, that is a strategy. But Interesting. You, it didn't work. I don't know if that even counts. I think maybe you lose if you die. But there was some something out, some show, some game show, something I was thinking about the other day, where that was a strategy. Um. Oh no, somebody. I think it was somebody told me about this contest, and part of the <laughs> part of the prizes were Bitcoin, uh, oh. and it was like five Bitcoin if you got into fourth place, and it was like a hundred dollars in third place or whatever. Um, and nowadays that would be just scams of money. Back then it was almost nothing. Twenty-three, I won. Uh oh. So it is the way to win it. Oh, I win it. Twenty-three to one. <laughs> Keep talking, James. Keep talking. Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh no. That's one way as well. <laughs> just exit the game if you're winning. Yeah. I, Rage I just, quit. I just. I just <laughs> forgot that the button was not going to help me. Banana. No! No! Ah! Now he's gonna rage quit! No! Banana. Oh no! Okay, so that time I didn't lose my points when oh. I went off. Maybe it's only in single player mode. Maybe. Yeah. Try it, try it again. Try and get a point and then jump off the bed. Okay. Oh, yeah, I lost points. Yeah, I lost points. So there must be some like, uh, like, like maybe. It doesn't say anything about that. That I saw. Let's see. Da, da, da. Actually, it doesn't say anything about losing points. Just says avoid falling off the bed and avoid the ceiling fan. Uh, I'm not sure that's a feature. <laughs> so, is that a bug of losing points when you fall off the bed? Or is that um, something overlooked? Ah. Okay, stop, stop, stop dying. I, I, okay, you <laughs> failed to understand. I stumbled upon the idea of dying to win the game by being crappy and getting close to dying and then realizing, <laughs> oh, if I die one more time. <laughs> Bananas. <laughs> the button is not part of the game. <laughs> I know. It's part of the program. <laughs> it is part of the program. Does up and down influence your jump height? It seems to. Like Yes. I think so, and but not entirely, because not... I don't know if I pressed up there or not. Okay. Maybe. Give me that joystick. 
Enough of your shenanigans. <laughs> They're not shenanigans. <laughs> shenanigans require intent. Because that's not in the manual either. <laughs> Up and down affect your height a little bit. And do they affect it mid-jump too? Let's see. <clears throat> I feel like it doesn't affect it mid-jump. Just side to side mid-jump. And moving side to side, I don't know. I, I guess you're asking the wrong person. I never got a hang of it. So. And the uh, the opponent, the computer opponent, can, can't can catch flies or the banana. He just influences your, your bounce. Okay, you definitely want to add that to the manual. Because it does, I don't think up... I don't think it says up influ up and down influences, or at least the instructions you sent me. Up and down influences the height of the jump. Maybe I missed that. Oh, give me those flies. Give me those flies. Oh, I love the zoom in. That's super awesome. Get those bubbles. those bubbles. Perfect! No, you definitely don't always want to use up. So now the bed is smaller. Now does up and down influence mid-jump, like when you're already up in the air? It seems to, but like can you stop yourself from going up so high? I, I try. I think so. Yeah, it seems to stop you. Like I'm pressing it... up and as soon as I press down, yep, it stops you. So you can kind of control not going into the fan. That's really good. Okay, that's really helpful. Yeah, that's nice. Banana. Banana. You have 222 points. Oh, you ran it. Now you have more. <laughs> it was perfect The amount of points you get goes up. The yes. more points you have, the more points you get. Um, it's level based. Oh, so I didn't see you get to a new level. Uh, yeah, you missed the uh, bubble popping, but I will. I think I just need one more fly because there's only one fly on the screen. Give it, give it. There we go. Watch this. Zoom. That's super awesome. Now the monkeys are trying to get me. Mm -hmm. The poor little fly. So it's done from a different perspective. Um, just, just bubbles that the fly wants to get. It's oh. the thing that flies are doing <laughs> and that you don't know. You're all, what are the flies doing? And they're after uh, bubbles. I don't know. They're just invisible bubbles only flies can see. That's right. Ah! ah. No! I flew right too close the to the fan. Oh, and you lost points. You're at 418 now. Oh. Weren't you five something before? Was I? Did we determine that that was not intentional or did have He we says not? it's not intentional, ah. so that's possibly something that needs to be looked at. I mean, if, it, if doesn't, wants to. it doesn't it's seem not. automatically wrong to be punished for no. jumping off. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. But you, when you lost points there, you lost a lot of points. Or I just remembered wrong. Maybe you had 256 and not five something. Oh, could be. I don't know. If only there was a way to find out. Oh! So, uh, yeah, there's party, party in the park. It's, uh... Yeah, it's Pride, uh, Pride celebration this, is this weekend around here, so. Hmm. Party time! Party it's music! It was party time on the ferry, too. Oh, was it? Yeah. Summertime is always, like, a real joy on the ferry. Like, you go on the top deck and everybody's oh, yeah. just like, I'm on vacation! <laughs> and, like, that's what it looks like. It looks like you're on a cruise and everybody's just having <laughs> the time of their lives. It's, it's well, really it's, awesome. Oh, it's so nice on the deck on the ferry when yeah. it's hot out. <sighs> and they have a pet zone on the top deck now. What? Yeah, so oh, one, nice. cord, one section of it, you can bring your dogs, assuming that they don't try to eat people, I guess. Can you pet the dogs? Uh, well, you can try. I want to pet the dogs. Yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> that's one of the reasons to leave on the car deck. Were is there... that there, that's, you get uh, to meet dogs. Yeah. Were there any cats there? No. Ah, uh, I want to pet the cats. Uh, but I would ah, no. expect oh, cats to be in a carrier. I, missed some I mean, yeah. Oh. 
some cats are, of course, going to be, uh, like, friendly enough and, like, yeah. I can imagine a cat that would be cool with being on the ferry. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I can imagine most would be like, no! Because <laughs> there's cats that, like, are cool being in cars, going on bike carriers, mm -hmm. being in, like, s astronaut backpacks. Have you seen those with the bubbles? Bubble see-through openings? I've only seen a person on a bike on someone's back. Like, on their shoulder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that, and I did not approve. Even no, that's though super it was dangerous. It was awesome slash terrible. <laughs> awesome dangerous. Yes. I was yes. like, probably I'm being just like a little helicopter remote <laughs> parent who doesn't even have that cat. <laughs> did you stop them and say, stop it! Stop abusing your cat! Yeah, we had a cat who was... He didn't like water, but he was okay with it. Tolerated it. Oh, yeah. That wasn't much of a bonus. So this, there's three uh, bed sizes, apparently. So we're on this thinnest bed. Yeah, you wouldn't want to make it much smaller. Do the waves get... Are the, the waves, waves are steeper same? now than they were before. Oh, uh, okay. And they can't get much steeper. Uh, oh, almost a thousand. Yeah, I'm close. See if you can make it to the bubble stage. Oh, how about... We think of some more likely task uh, for me to achieve. 25 points. I got 30. Oh my goodness, what? I don't know what oh, happened. Oh, you're on... Did, we... Did you continue? Maybe. I don't know. I'm... Oh, is that a bug? Is that another bug that we discovered? That you continue on the same stage you left? It's not a bug. I'm just really good at this game. Just killing it with the points. Oh my god. I gosh. dodged that fan there, too. Yeah, good stuff. So that might ah! that might be a bug as well so that it's at, not. I'm not as setting. good at dodging the fan as some people. There's this James guy who's pretty good at it. <laughs> is there a glitch in the waves? Smaller bed, ah! or is it a stream issue? It's not a stream issue. It is possibly a bug. Possibly timing issue with my system i would have to take a look at it on an m i made it to the third level L unlikely story <laughs> they squeeze away. oh once you unlocked you can choose it from the start oh okay um, where is it how oh oh up and down oh, oh nice okay so is this level one that's level one two okay. Three. Yeah. So I can... was wondering why I thought, is there urine on the outside of the bed now? <laughs> Bad monkeys. Bad monkeys. Look at all that urine up to the top of the bed. Okay. Um, there's also more to this game. The glitch only appears on James' system. I win again. Victory. <laughs> Victory's mine. Special. So there's the credits. Design, Matthew Halpern. Uh, programming, Zach Scalero. Taya Music, Mark Johannes. Monkey Spinning Monkeys, licensed by Incompetech, <laughs> Incorporated 2024. Not only that, there's previews for other games. Ah, time down. Fly Hunter, which we've played on the show. So that one is already a game that is existing. Oh, this is previews. Okay. Yep. I gotcha. um, Bigfoot's Bluff which we don't know anything about yet. That's, that's obviously the, like some sort of poker game or something definitely like that. Poker You're just game. playing with Big, Bigfoot. Bigfoot, yeah. Bigfoot is your opponent. Mm -hmm. He takes up most of the screen. Mm -hmm. His cards look super tiny. Very small. Yeah. yeah, so you have to beat him in a poker game. Yeah, and he's always but you, you let changing the, his you strategy. Let, you let the Bigfoot win. Just like you let the Wookiee win. That's right. Because <laughs> otherwise, that's what happens. A big foot comes and squishes yeah. you. Um, yeah, the public doesn't know anything about this game yet, so this is in the future. Octopusher, which we premiered this game on the show. It's a dual. It was very cool. A dual 2600-7800 cart. Oh. And you put it in a 2600, it plays a 2600 game. Put in the 7800, nice. it plays the 7800. That's game. really cool. Yeah. It was so cool. I believe that's the one I flashed to the Uno cart, actually. That's the one because I was talking during the um, interview about uh, games that you can flash directly. So, therefore, that would work on the 2600 plus because I flashed it directly. There you go, some previews. Um, I don't think the console switches are used in this game, so it is 100% 
Couch compliant. Music on? Music off. It's so couch compliant, you don't even have to turn off the console. Beat that, couch yeah, for couch compliance. That's pretty great, couch compliance. Yeah. <laughs> that is like platinum status, platinum plus status for couch compliance. I mean, you want to <laughs> reserve some room for the uh, uh, couch compliances that we haven't e haven't even occurred to us yet. You can just keep adding pluses. I'm, uh, sure. <laughs> but what if you could change the uh, switches from the couch somehow? Then that would you would. Ha I'm just saying, leave some room. Uh, so instead of going straight to platinum plus plus plus, you could go. You had gold, so now it's gold plus, <laughs> and then you have some room to grow. There are games where you can virtually change those switches. Yeah, I believe it. Where the switch works, but also you can change it in the game. And then at a certain point, where you switch it in the game, and this switch on the console goes chunk. <laughs> Yeah, that's, just has to that's use some sort of railgun technology. Plat it only works once. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then the smoke comes just out. Just an explosion. <laughs> that couching, right. <laughs> I like the different status of couch compliance. It's all a joke. There's only really one. It's like, can you do everything in the game without getting up and flipping switches? That's it. But exit is a whole new level. That's only been one, one game so far. But... Uh, it's really cool that it goes to zero players. And this too. Super couch compliant. You can exit the game. Uh, and just like very usable. Like oh. very obviously like yeah, yeah user friendly. It's really good. Yeah. Um, some games have done it where you hold down the button in the game because there's nothing in the game you need to hold it down. Mm. You hold it down for five seconds. Like in Boulder Dash 2. You hold it down and the character starts shaking and then he collapses into bones. Mm -hmm. And then you exit the game. I meant the menu specifically. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks absolutely awesome. Oh, I lost my level three <laughs> abilities. <laughs> Again, just got in late, missed everything. Oh, no. Okay. Well, oh. Did a dark scene. <laughs> Press the button when I didn't need to. Let's make it to level three again. So you've been watching any movies or TV shows that are awesome lately, or terrible, or mid? Just stuff that other people already know about, like the Pathmaster. Ah, uh, did I hook you on that? Yes, or did you, you did. Know? No, you don't. You, you hooked me on it. Sure. So which Taskmasters do you watch? All of them? We're only the watching. Ones? We're watching. The, we're we're watching the British one. Okay. We haven't. We're we have many more to go. So. Oh yeah, seventeen seasons. Yeah. Um, there's also the New Zealand and Australian ones for English speaking versions. Mm -hmm. Then there's like a ton of other countries. I started watching the the Denmark one for a bit. Um, the humor is very different. <laughs> I'm like, what? What is this joke? That is a very weird joke. I don't quite understand the humor of that joke, but... Ah, get it! Ah! Ah, falling behind! Ah! Ah! Ah, I missed one. Did you? Yeah, I missed one. It popped. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, timeout. Oh, no! There's one more. Perfect! Yeah, so... Maybe I did get you it. You just have to not die, maybe. Oh, maybe. Maybe it's just you don't die. Maybe I got it right the last second. Is yeah. Is yeah. uh, Apipode is perfect that I didn't die, or perfect that I popped all the bubbles? Uh, I swear I missed one there. I didn't see you miss one, so... Yeah. It could be that you are just wrong about that. I could be. So we're, we're watching The Mandalorian, which we are enjoying. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I... I... I'm not sure I've seen all of them. But I watched it and enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's like like I said the last show. It's like a very, it's like a western. It's like a samurai movie, where the guy just goes from place to place, um, solving trouble <laughs> for the for the locals. But there's also a through line as well. Oh, music started up. Hopefully, don't get. Uh, Why do you keep jumping off the bed? Are you no trying reason. to lose points? No reason at all. Oh, I see. Seeing if I can get to other monkey worlds outside of the realm of monkey monkey mattress. I don't see how that could be an accident. <laughs> it's a specific oh, amount what? of points that you're losing. Oh, five. And it makes a noise points, when right? it happens. 
Yeah, and there's no other way to lose points in the game. Yeah. So how is that a mistake? Yeah, that's How is that's that a weird. bug? That is It's like, weird. if it wasn't for the noise and the s specificness of... Like, I don't... <laughs> yeah, it's... Like, if they deleted, I could, I could see that being a mistake, but, like, losing a specific amount seems like... If it put, says all bubbles, they come back around. Oh, okay, okay, so that's how I got perfect. And maybe that's why um, I was able to get... Am I invincible? Yeah, I watched Andor. Yeah, I like that. Oh, no, I'm not invincible. <laughs> um, okay. So I only just noticed that... I noticed at the end of the last... At the end, when you Meow. finished it, just before you went to the thing, that you were playing a kitty. <laughs> Meow. And I missed you setting this up. How did this happen? Uh, I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Well, I'll just watch the video, I guess. That's an Easter egg. Ah! I tried not to show how I did it. Oh. Uh, it was very hard not to do it, but I was managed to do it for Darcy, at least. Really amazing, huge sprites uh, using Playfield, I'm guessing, for the hands. Oh my god. So you have a time limit, so if you don't... Oh, I fell through the bed for a second. Um, also, this... Uh, as soon as I saw the waves being um, demonstrated in this game, it reminded me of another game that has waves called Wavy Navy, mm. where you're a boat on top of waves, and the waves don't go up and down like this, so this is even more advanced than Wavy Navy, um, where you're a boat and you go up and down the waves, but the waves just move across the screen slowly, um, and there are kind of Galaxian um, airplanes at the top, okay. and they dive down and shoot, and there's helicopters that come in, there's missiles, and there's also mines in the water. I think, oh my god, that would be absolutely astounding for the 2600. I bet you could do a scaled down version with maybe not so many airplanes at the top, because people have done Galaga, people have done Galaxian, so I don't see why somebody wouldn't be able to do a version of Wavy Navy. Mm. It's like, it's been on my want list uh, for a long time, but um, I was going to keep it like, oh, maybe I should make Wavy Navy, but um, I think it would be take me a very long time to be able to figure out how to do that, because I think you would definitely need to use the arm chip to be able to do the waves and all the compli- definitely all the complications of all the, um, all the different ships that are flying at you, and yeah. Has anybody else played Wavy Navy before? I played it on, like, the Apple II in, like, elementary school. Way, way, way back. Probably shortly after it came out. So the, the arms are very predictable, but they're still challenging, because you want to try and get all the bubbles. Ah, the usual reason. Greed. Ah! <laughs> greed! <laughs> greed got you again. This game... Oh, see the cat starts off inside the, the wave. That uh, might be because he's a cat and it's a little different, but I don't remember seeing the monkey start off inside the wave. But it might be just like, that's the starting position, and then when the wave catches you, then you get pushed into oh another thing is they could you could program it so the characters fall onto the bed just slightly fall so they don't start inside the water bed but it's not a big deal it only takes a second to get going adjust itself Priz prizrak um says this game reminds me of mario party or maybe wario mini games yes just this like fun fun games but those kind of like Wario games, you only play for like 20 seconds each, and then it goes to the next one, and goes to the next one. Fun two-player game, fun even one-player game. And, and especially like that it trades off between the bonus area and this. I think that's always needed in a game where it gives you kind of a change of scenery, even if it's something simple. 
um, to switch off to. Right, kitty? It's a cat in the game. I'm gonna make it to a thousand, and then I will retire. Oh, careful. Oh, I think I'm on the third level. Oh, no! Last monkey! Last monkey. Last, last you cat, 40, actually. 44 more points. Oh, last 39. fly in the level. Time up. No! Oh. Oh, it's not time enough. I'm going to have to get it from this side. It's in the middle. The timing's in the middle. There we go. Should get a bunch of points here. Put me over at the top. How are you doing today, Vancouver? That's our city! He said our city! <laughs> <laughs> That's where I live! Yes! Uh, thousand there points! You go. Thousand forty-one. Now I can die peacefully in the fan. <laughs> Come on, get in the fan. You can't just choose to be in the fan. Apparently I can't. Come on, bounce me into the fan. Oh, now I can't go in the fan. Okay. We'll just get all the bananas then. Unlock the secret power where I can't. Ah, there we go. It's so sad. They tumble off the screen. Very cool. Uh, I love the animation of the waterbed. I have never seen something like that in yeah, a 2600 really game. Uh, the even from the motion. pictures, when I saw the picture, I already I didn't I didn't even know what it was. I didn't <laughs> realize it was a bed. I thought it was some sort of terrain, and that this was grass or something. Yeah. But it just looked appealing. And the fluidity of the motion of the bed yeah. opens up a whole world of possibility for using Playfield as movement, like water-based movement, or I don't, I don't know what else you could use it for, but anything for water. It's super amazing. Yeah, it is a 2600 game. Pitfall 2 and Hero did something else. That's true. Uh, Hero did have the water and Pitfall. It, you didn't you didn't really interact with it mm. in pitfall 2 you swam in the water and it had the waves but it didn't it was just for visuals right um but a game like wavy navy you're floating on the on the top of the waves and this one you're actually being shot up flung, into the air yeah, yeah. flung it's um it's it looks like very early nes yeah, good yeah people are pushing the limits of what the 2600 can do it is amazing. And they also have some box artwork um, sketched up. So let me uh, load that on the screen for you all. I think I've got it here. There we go. Oh, where'd it go? Come back here. Oh, where's the window edge? So they're hoping to put this out in cartridge form at some point. Mattress Monkeys by Phantom Logic. Very, very cute cover there. there we go. Yeah, the 2600 has more colors than the NES. Like, you can have as many colors as you want on the 2600. Line by line, a new color every line. 128 colors. It was super advanced. And not for decades did uh, any system catch up to the number of colors on the 2600. Yeah. And the re and also that each line is like a brand new line for the 2600. It's that, more advanced in that way. Yeah. It's not a screen buffer that requires an X amount of memory. Right, right. There's different display modes. It's like, hey, here's a new line. What do you want to draw? Hey, here's a new line. Draw whatever you like. Yeah. It's it's super limited, but also super powerful yeah. at the same time. And I think that's why people are really drawn to the 2600. So congratulations, 8-Bit Poet. Um, this, this game, I, I love games that add something that's new. Yeah. That you've never seen before in a 2600 game that is like, oh my god, wow, that just blows you away. Even if it's not pushing limits in this aspect or this aspect, it um, it it advances what people think the game system can do. 
and uh, yeah, it's amazing. It was surpassed by other Atari systems like 5200, 7800 can be to 256. Oh, okay, 5200 came out not too, not too long after. What what year was that? Early 80s. Yeah. Love the A game for your Atari. A game for your Atari. Just yeah, it's one game. 2600 as a line buffer at best. Yeah. They could have done 256. I wonder why they did not. Yeah, they they just forego a bit. I don't know. Guess they thought that was enough. Plenty. It is. That's just the, the kind of the point, though. Yeah. Is that like, well, so... sixteen was pretty good for everybody else, you know? Yeah. So one twenty-eight. Oh my yeah. God. Uh, what do you want more than that? And uh, wasn't it? Um, but do you have to sacrifice resolution to use more colors? Not on the twenty-six hundred. Not in theory. Not in theory. Just in practice. <laughs> not. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Because you just say, what color do you want? That's that's your color. That's it. Yeah. Who will ever need 256 colors? Well, you can make more colors by flickering if you want, I guess. So, thanks for uh, hanging out with us today for this uh, super crazy show with uh, Uno Plus Cart Advances. Available now at your local uh, Plus Cart Uno Cart retailer. Um, and you can automatically update your plus cart right now going online uno cart not sure when that'll be coming out alifer um i think he said soonish um and also mattress monkeys lots of fun bouncing lots of around fun, yeah great concepts there 2600 i make games one line at a time Ooh, that's a good that's a good slogan for a t-shirt with 2600 some some sort of mashup of one line at Great games one line at a time or something. Only only programmers would know what that means, but that's that's even cool. So coming up on ZPH, uh, got a bunch of games, but uh, next one that's an exclusive is Bernie in the Tower of Doom on July fifth. Don't know if that's your show or Erlen's show, but it is on a Friday. Uh, for the 7800 and then the show after that on a Tuesday a developer spotlight on Steve Engelhart very prolific 2600 7800 programmer plus a secret homebrew from Steve Engelhart as well we have an exclusive world premiere of his newest game so that's gonna be a lot of fun we need some Bernie games for the 2600 yes we do get Bernie on the 2600 um, what else? Uh, we've got Frazzled. I'm not sure if that's the exact date it's going to be on, but we have the exclusive final build of Frazzled from Dave M as well. Uh, official 7800 playlist continues. Ooh, we've got a pretty full weekend. Maybe this Sunday I would like to do that because we're playing through all the classic 7800 games because it's the, uh... 40th anniversary of the premiere of the 7800 in retail stores. Uh, yeah, Secret Champ Hamburg game uh, in June. <laughs> I need to change that. Uh, from six to seven ish. Lots of room in seven. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what he says for when that will be ready. Uh, screen buffers are for wimps. Yeah. And uh, developer spotlight. Lawrence Stavely from Reboot. I think that's coming sooner than later, if uh, indications are all pointing in that direction. So maybe July, early August, maybe. And later on, a uh, developer spotlight on Chris Walton as well. Um, so lots of great things coming up. And uh, yeah. So thanks for hanging out with us. This is a copyrightable song. Blah, 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 blah. We're playing canned music. Yeah, um, can anybody hear the music? I hope not. I can, so the microphone can, but at a low volume. So hopefully they can't. Eh, I don't care. Don't monetize my YouTube channel anyway. <laughs> so thanks for hanging out with us. Vitoko, Chitlala, Thrust26, Phil San, Gamma Dev, D Train, Prow7, BR Pocock, Pseudo Graphics, Marco J. Thank you for coming on. Pleasure to talk with you as always. 
Uh, Der Justy. That's a new name I don't recognize. Phil San. Alnafer, thank you as well for coming on the show. Um, and thank you both for all your efforts for the Plus card. It is awesome to be able to play DPC Plus games on them. Text Rich, 8 Bit Poet, awesome work on the Mattress Monkeys. Uh, Spinley1970, somebody named Americans. Uh, Prizrak, <laughs> uh, Ivory Tower Collections. Who else? Who else? Huge ass. I think I said Spinley Vitoko. Uh, anybody else? Other names? Tari Warlord. Master Case. I just sneaks in at the very top line of the buffer. And uh, let's see if we can uh, shuffle you off to anybody uh, on Twitch. Let's see if there's any. Um, Anybody playing here that we follow? Get pop-ups, get out of here. Nope. So, anybody playing some retro games that we can raid? It's all NES. It's always NES minimum. Oh! Is that... Uh, that, that game is on the 7800? But, uh, well, come on. Anybody playing anything before NES? <laughs> no. Somebody's playing Castellian, but that looks like a game on the 7800. Whose name escapes me now? Mmm. 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 Nah, we're not going to send you off to anyone. They're all playing NES games. We plays retro games. Tower Toppler, that's what. We're going to take buzzing into the raid. Take the buzzing. Is there buzzing? Is there buzzing? Who's buzzing? Stop buzzing. Our microphone is buzzing? Yeah, we're going to take the buzzing in there. <sighs> There's buzzing. Oh. Let's see. It's hard to tell because there's noise outside. Still buzzing? Maybe it's the noise outside that sounds like buzzing. Flies escape from the game. <laughs> Sometimes a microphone. Let's see. I'm sure that was great. That's them. <laughs> we don't hear our own microphone. That made it much worse. <laughs> oh well, we will sign off then. Uh, I will figure out the buzzing after. So thank you for joining us today. Oh. And we will have a great weekend. And we'll see you on Tuesday. It was shortly gone because I unplugged the microphone. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.